Good morning. We're here for the 2019-2020 uh, budget hearing with the Metro Nashville Public Schools. I'm Mayor David Riley. I'm joined this morning by Emily Pacini to my right, the Chief of Staff here in the Mayor's Office, and Talia Lomax O'Neill, the City's uh, Finance Director. Uh, I've been starting these off with a little speech, which I'm going to skip this morning and uh, turn it over directly to you. Dr. Battle to make your first presentation uh, on a budget to the City of Nashville. Thank you. Um, we will first hear from Ms. Christian Bugs, board member for Metro Nashville Public Schools. Good morning, Mayor Briley and staff. Thank you for taking time to consider the board's budget request for the upcoming year. It is through forums like this where we have the opportunity to hear the board's rationale for arriving at the various priorities that we believe are critical to the success of our city's public school district. Mayor Briley, our city continues to grow at an unprecedented rate. Every day, many more families move to Nashville than leave. No one knows this better than you, but much of this growth has been fantastic for our city, but for many of our students, staff, and faculty, the growth has come with a cost. Rising home prices and rent, coupled with an increased cost of living, have created a burden on our, on our, on our employees that they were not experiencing just a few years ago. Many parts of town have lost the affordability we all once enjoyed. We don't have to tell you this, but one of the peculiar ironies of living, of being in a livable and affordable place is the inevitable erosion of liv livability and affordability. Throughout this period of growth, the board has taken a very measured approach in terms of the budgets we have brought to you and your predecessors. Pay, pay increase requests have been humble. Instructional material and professional development requests have been less than our students and teachers need and infrastructure requests have been made knowing the amount we would receive would not be sufficient to maintain the learning environments that our students deserve. The board is keenly aware that the available revenue that comes from a city's growth takes time to be realized in the city's coffers. As you know, there have been years where even our modest requests were not funded. All of us, the board, the employees, our students and their families have taken these setbacks in stride. Despite the various disappointments and delays of past, we have marshaled on. We have made progress, found our instructional focus, and moved thousands of students forward. We are incredibly proud of our collective work, and we look forward to the hard work that lies ahead. Mayor Briley, we want you to be part of our school city system. Our city continues to move forward in a way that is the envy of other cities around the nation. All the while, we have waited patiently, and we are ready for more productive financial times here in Metro National Government. We have faith that you share the hopefulness that is contained within our proposed budget. So what does a school district in a vibrant, growing city look like? First, it has the capacity to serve all types of students from all types of backgrounds. Next, it provides learning environments in all schools that are safe, engaging, and equipped with the instructional materials necessary to help each student reach his or her potential. And finally, it recognizes, attracts, retains, and develops the level of teaching and support talent that the city's students and their families both demand and deserve. These attributes of a top-tier school district are things the board recognizes and the city craves. Therefore, we bring you a budget for your consideration. It is a confident and assertive budget that makes significant advancements, investments in several areas. Instructional materials for teachers and students, capital and infrastructure, an increased expansion of the district's social emotional learning initiatives and a salary increase for our employees that gives them a fighting chance to continue to live in the city they enjoy and love. Mayor Briley, again, we thank you for your time today and thank you for your continued dedication to our, our city, its citizens, and especially its children. At this point, I would like to introduce our newly appointed interim director, Dr. Adrian Battle. Dr. Battle, Dr. Battle brings to this unique role a perspective on how to be a transformational leader within education in the community. We are extremely proud to have her valuable and capable leadership during this time of trans transition. She has been in the trenches serving kids in this district for more than 15 years. She is a respected, proven leader at MNPS and has served our children well at every tier. She is a bright example of the greatness that comes out of Metro schools, rising up from a student to a teacher to a principal to an administrator. Yes, Dr. Battle is one of MNPS's homegrown professionals who is an unwavering proponent for student achievement. Prior to her current role, she served as, as the Southeast Quadrant Community Superintendent in which her primary responsibilities were supporting all pre-K through 12 schools in the Quadrant. 
Dr. Battle has a proven track record in turning around low-performing schools. Through her commitment to academic excellence, she has helped lead Antioch High School to become a designated 2014 Tennessee Reward School, which represents the top 5% of schools for progress under her tenure. Additionally, Antioch High School was named a 2015 model school by the International Center for Leadership and Education, an international baccalaureate school, and was among the first schools in MNPS to become a community achieved school, providing wraparound services for students and families and creating strategic business and community alignments. Further, Dr. Battle was the recipient of the 2015 William J. and Lucille H. Field Award for Excellence in Tennessee Secondary School Leadership and the 2015 Academies of National of Nashville Executive Principal of the Year. She is bad. <laughs> Mayor Briley, it is my pleasure to introduce Nashville native, MNPS alumna, educator, and administrator, our Interim Director of Schools, Dr. Adrian Battle. Well, thank you, Ms. Bugs, for that um, wonderful introduction this morning. Um, good morning, Mayor Briley and team. As you know, today is my third day as the Interim Director of Schools, <laughs> and this is only my second uh, public appearance and assignment. I met with Governor Lee yesterday along with school superintendents and school board members from across the state to express our concerns about his voucher legislation. From the outset, I want to be sure everyone knows how proud I am to be a product of Metro National Public Schools and how grateful I am to work alongside these great teammates. Most of all, I want to be sure everyone recognizes how fortunate this city is to have such talented and dedicated teachers, staff, and administrators working in our public schools. Mayor Briley, I'm new to this role, but you and I both grew up here in Nashville. Our families both have long been involved in this community, and we both entered our positions abruptly at the beginning of the budget season. So I know you understand. As a matter of fact, the day of the MNPS budget hearing last year, you were beginning day 43 of your new role as mayor. I'm even more fortunate to be sitting here in front of you today in day number three as the director of MNPS. I appreciate your patience as I adjust to my new role. I have dedicated my career to the children of Nashville. As a teacher in the classroom, as a principal and administrator, and like you when you stepped in as mayor, I'm no stranger to the budget process. Our proposed budget focuses on the necessities of educating our students and providing them with the teachers, the materials, and the support they need to excel. The work is too important to just tread water. We at Metro Schools are pushing forward with urgency, focus, and determination at full speed. Our students deserve no less. I believe that our goal here is simple, more prepared graduates. The city's economy is booming. Our kids have the promise of real careers and meaningful work. Our biggest responsibility is to prepare them for their futures. There are three things we understand we must do today, starting today. First, we must always remember that our students are the top priority. Everything we do must benefit them and their futures. That begins as early as pre-K and kindergarten. Secondly, I believe in high expectations and high supports for both students and staff. We have high expectations for both groups and we have an obligation to meet these high expectations with even greater support. The third thing we must do is eliminate the distractions to make this a smooth transition, especially um, right now as we're in testing time and we're preparing to close out a great school year. Mayor, we appreciate your focus on our priority schools and we share your urgency and providing the necessary and appropriate staffing for those schools and, so, and the support for the students in those schools. That urgency requires immediate action, but that action must be strategic and lead to long-term success for all MMPS students. For example, our priority schools could use more staff, more counselors, social workers, teachers, and support staff. In fact, the reality is that, is that we have 123 vacancies in our priority schools. However, if we simply add budget positions to the priority schools without recognizing that fulfilling those positions, in addition to filling the vacancies, without funding a salary structure that provides faculty and staff a living wage that allows them to afford to live in our community, 
we would just be adding more vacancies rather than actually addressing the issue. Some might say that we should remove positions from other schools and send them to priority schools. That would be short-sighted and result in long-term shortcomings for the school system. A good step we are taking in our elementary schools are the care centers in this budget. You'll hear more about that in just a moment. It is a first step and a beginning. We hope to expand in future years, but if funded, they will be located in schools where they can be and have the most impact. Our school board recognizes that the most important thing we can do, the greatest service we can provide for the benefit of our students in all of our schools, especially our priority schools, is to provide students with great teachers and staff who we pay enough to live here. Our school board recognizes that to execu execute strategies, we need teachers and staff. To attract and retain teachers and staff, we must pay them. Adequately paying our employees forms the foundation for everything we do for Nashville's children. And the long-term impact and return on investment will exceed anything else and is necessary for success and imperative to serving our students. We also know that pay is not enough. We must also address the climate and culture in our schools and provide resources for the schools to efficiently and effectively support all of our students' needs. The proposed pay increase and the care centers will help us create a culture within our schools that will attract the best teachers, staff, and administrators in the nation. I don't think anybody could argue with that. Our short and long-term goal is to provide a high-quality education to all of our students, regardless of their zip code, language, economic status, race, or the community they live in. We are truly humbled that the city entrusts its children and trusts its future to us. We take that responsibility very seriously, and we are counting on your support and the support of the people of Nashville. We will not betray the city's trust. We will not let you down. Now, at this time, I would like to turn it over to our Chief Operating Officer, Chris Henson, who will walk us through our budget documents. Thank you, Dr. Battle. Each of you has a uh, copy of the operating budget that was approved by the Board of Education on April 9th. If you'll turn to the first page, I'll spend the majority of my time on this page, uh, page number one. Uh, this is intended to reflect a summary of all of the changes uh, from the current year budget to the proposed budget on this one page. At the top part of the page, uh, we have included the employee compensation that has been approved by the school board. Uh, you can see that uh, our certificated employees, the proposal is for a 10% cost of living adjustment plus a step increase, uh, which totals uh, around $45 million. And then we also have uh, the 10% cost of living adjustment and salary step increase for our support employees, and that totals approximately $13.5 million. We always take into consideration that uh, we're going to have vacancies and turnover during the fiscal year, and we estimate that we will achieve savings of approximately $3 million through vacancies and turnover that will occur throughout the fiscal year. So our uh, subtotal for our employee compensation <coughs> proposal is approximately $54.8 million. In the middle part of the page, we have uh, a, other additions. We have inflationary increases and other required expenditures, which total approximately $2.2 million. This would reflect things such as software license increases, Microsoft Volume, Microsoft Office 365, et cetera. Also included here would be our contract with the Metro Health Department that uh, provides our nursing services for our students. There's a contract increase uh, included. We also have uh, the normal increase in our custodial and grounds contract, as well as uh, utility rate increase. Uh, that is all included in this $2.2 million. The next line is our additional costs for the Metro Government Oracle R12 conversion. Uh, we have three positions that will be dedicated to that. Uh, one will be a position control in human resources, and then two positions in the IT area, as well as increased costs for that R12 conversion uh, that have been provided to us uh, from the team. 
uh, which in totals, uh, in total, in including the positions, would be around $1.5 million. We also have our existing pre-K program. As you know, the federal pre-K expansion grant will sunset next year. Uh, we do have carryover funding that will go, uh, that will be, we'll be able to continue through the first semester, the first half of the fiscal year. So this represents a half year, which allows us to continue with those additional 22 pre-K classrooms that we have, as well as the staffing at the Cambridge Early Learning Center in the Antioch area. Uh, so again, this is representing a half year uh, since the grant will be able to continue to fund the first part of the year, uh, 25.5 positions at a cost of around $1.4 million. Then we also have, as we do every year, the increase for our charter schools. Uh, we have a number of charter schools that continue to add grades. Therefore, the charter school enrollment continues to increase. We also have an increase in the per pupil rate that is calculated by the Tennessee Department of Education. Uh, this is a lower increase than we have seen in prior years. Uh, this past year, we were looking at around a $14 million increase. This is about a $9 million increase uh, for our uh, charter transfer that's required, again, uh, by state law. So the total of the, the subtotal of the required additions is around $14.1 million. Uh, if, if you add in the employee compensation additions up above uh, to that number, we're at around $68.9 million of an increase. The bottom part of the page typically represents the proposed improvements uh, that uh, we would like to make, that the school board has voted to make. They total a little over $7.7 .7 million. The first is that the Board of Education has uh, had discussions with the Metro Office of Internal Audit uh, regarding an MOU which would allow two Metro uh, internal audit staff to be housed and stationed at the Board of Education for continual uh, audits of different processes and procedures that occur throughout the school district throughout the school year at a cost proposed cost of $230,000. We also are including three additional positions in our human resources and employee relations area. These would be two talent acquisition partners, which are basically teacher recruiters as well as an additional employee relations manager to deal with the caseload of employee investigations. We have four additional positions in our IT area to provide additional supports to schools. Uh, this is an area of emphasis for the school board as far as infrastructure in our IT and our human resources areas. Next would be the increase uh, for our textbooks, uh, approximately $2.7 million. Uh, the next adoption for next year is social studies and history, and this would provide additional textbooks for social studies, history, as well as uh, help with some of the shortfalls that we experienced this year with our science adoption. The next line is uh, the adding of four additional work days for our uh, parapros. Uh, this would allow our parapros to have additional professional development opportunities and align their uh, professional development days with the exceptional education teachers' professional development <coughs> at a cost of approximately $850,000. The next line is the individual learning plan software for our English learners that is a new requirement from the Tennessee Department of Education at a cost of approximately $350,000. The next line represents uh, an increase for our early college program by adding an additional grade at our early college uh, program, which is located at Nashville State Community College for additional teaching positions. The next line is our social emotional learning um, account. Uh, the proposal here is to add uh, trauma-informed specialists and family involvement and family engagement specialists, as well as to add uh, 12 care centers at our highest need elementary schools. <clears throat> the next line is to increase the pay for our bus drivers and bus monitors by an additional dollar per hour, as well as increasing the attendance bonus for our bus drivers and instituting an attendance bonus for our bus monitors at a cost of approximately $2.1 million. The next line is the, uh, I skipped a line, the next line uh, above the bus driver monitor pay is our translation services, parent engagement. This would add two additional 
translators as well as an additional scheduler that schedules all of our translators for our families. Uh, three positions in total at a cost of $227,000. Then we have uh, a reduction of 11 non-school based positions at a cost of just over a million dollars or a savings, a reduction of just over a million dollars. And then we have a line various, which takes into consideration all of the other changes throughout our budget, uh, additions and reductions throughout the budget, four and a half positions and an actual reduction of $225,000. Three of those positions are the addition of deans at our three exceptional education centers, our special education centers, uh, Cora Howe, Harris Hillman, and um, Merle, as well as an additional bus driver supervisor. Uh, to provide additional supports uh, for our bus drivers. That makes up basically the, the additional positions there. So we have a total in positions of an increase of 54.5 FTEs and an increase uh, in the budget total dollars of approximately $76.6 million, an 8.6% increase, which br would bring this budget proposal up to just under $963 million. The remaining pages I'll just touch on. Uh, page two, we always break out the changes uh, in all of our positions, both positions that are being reduced as well as positions <coughs> being, that are being added throughout the budget. We indicate which account number where they will be, the account name as well as what the position is. The dollars include benefits, so this is not just salaries, this is total position cost, which would include benefits. Uh, this does add up to the $54.5 million net in 54.5 position net increase that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this does not reflect positions that would be moving from one budget area to another. <clears throat> Page three shows, uh, reflects the work calendars for our 10 month support employees. This is where uh, you can see the second or the second line from the bottom are educational assistants where we are adding four additional paid days to their calendar for that additional professional development which would take their work calendar from 194 days to 198 days. Then you have a series of schedules or documents that break down our early learning centers in detail our alternative learning centers, our non-traditional schools. Uh, this shows all of the detail relating to those. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the addition of the grade at our early college program at Nashville State. The special education centers, uh, this is where the, the, the three dean positions are added, one at each, Cora Howe, Harris Hillman, and Merle. We have a document that reflects our estimate of our charter school uh, enrollment as well as the per pupil amount and increase. And then beginning on page nine, we have our 29 page uh, detailed line item budget, uh, which goes into detail uh, what all of the changes are throughout the budget. And then as, as you go through and go to the end of that, uh, page 37 is the end, uh, page 38, there's a three-page document that uh, assists in finding different accounts. It's sorted alphabetically, so if you have an idea of what the account name is, hopefully you can find what that account, that account number and where that would be in document number nine, the detailed line budget. Page 41 is our, begins our nutrition services fund budget. Uh, this is uh, a self-supporting enterprise fund. It does not uh, it does not use any local tax dollars. Uh, it's mainly a USDA-driven program. Uh, it's approximately $50 million, but again, a, a self-supporting uh, enterprise fund. We have the detail there. And then on page 46, our federal programs and grants fund, uh, which is required to be uh, kept in a separate fund. Uh, this would be the, uh, a lot of these dollars are, are very prescriptive. These are flow-through funds. Uh, all of these grants are on a reimbursable basis, so uh, we spend the money first and then request reimbursement back, typically from the State Department of Education. Uh, the fiscal year, as you know, for our federal programs and grants is in October 1 through September 30th fiscal year, uh, but the total that we're estimating for our federal programs and grants is approximately $89.5 million for next year. 
So with all of that said, I'm happy to, to attempt to answer any questions that you may have and, and again concentrating mainly on page one, which is that summary, unless you would like to go further into the detail. No, I would not. <laughs> uh, let, let me start by uh, expressing my appreciation to you, Dr. Battle, for uh, stepping into uh, a unique situation uh, in challenging times. And uh, you and I met Monday for uh, here in the in the mayor's office for the first time to talk about how uh, how we plan to work in a collaborative way to make uh, progress for the students that we both are committed to serve. I know your life has changed a, a lot in the in the last uh, few days, and I, I will repeat my encouragement that when you get home at night, you turn your phone off um, because uh, if you uh, they will find you. Uh, if they need you, but you need uh, to spend some time with your family. Uh, but uh, I am personally convinced that you are ready for this challenge, and um, I hope you understand that I am here uh, willing and ready to put my shoulder to the wheel to help you in any respect whatsoever. Um, let me, uh, without going any further, express my appreciation for all of the employees of Metro National Public Schools, both teachers and otherwise, and that I know the last year has been a difficult year, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, folks appreciate and understand that we have seen the hardship and acknowledge it, and uh, it is not going unnoticed. Um, let me thank the parents who are uh, working hard uh, in collaboration with the teachers and administrators at our schools and everyone working there to make sure that uh, we have an even stronger system uh, each and every day. And I know that uh, it takes a lot from parents to, to move us forward to. So I say thank you to all the parents uh, wearing red because I know that they are standing up for their kids. Uh, let me say that uh, I've spent, uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've been in three priority schools and, uh, and of varying degrees of uh, uh, success uh, currently. And uh, even in the ones that are struggling the most, they're clearly successes, just not enough of them. And uh, it's my job as mayor to work with you, Dr. Battle, to make sure that we see more successes out of each and every one of our priority schools, as well as every school that we have. Having said that, it's also clear to me that um, equal resources doesn't always result in equal outcomes. And so that we have got to make sure that we are focusing on equity when it comes to our Metro Nashville public schools. But let me tell you this, I am committed to making sure that equity does not come at the expense of any student who is currently in our district and that uh, we need to have a rising tide so that as we refocus uh, on our priority schools, it's not at the expense of a student who is in a school that's doing well. And I'm committed to making sure we do that as a community. Um, we're at a unique moment um, in, in the district uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One, this year's budget that I will present to the Metro Council will, for the first time, exceed a billion dollars that our city is spending on public education. It will also be um, the first time that 70% of those funds are local. It will be the largest local expenditure as a percentage and as a number on public, ed public education ever. And uh, in that moment, uh, I believe that it's um, an obligation upon me um, to make sure that we are coming together as a community and building community support for more resources going to public education. And I am committed to doing that. I wish I could stand, sit here today and tell you that we can fix it all in one year. But we can't. And, um, but I can tell you that I am committed to a multi-year plan to get these problems addressed across the board in our public school system because it's going to take us time to do it. Um, I plan to be more involved in uh, the public education process than any mayor before me, in part because we're spending more money locally than any at any time before. I'm not trying to usurp anybody's 
authority, I have no interest in doing that. But I do think that as we move forward as a community, I as a leader can build more community support for the resources necessary for public education if people have faith that I am working hard to make sure we're banking a difference. And I intend to do that. Dr. Battle and I have talked about that already. We're working on some high level um, agreements that I think we ought to make as a community before we move forward with the budget. And I will work with her and Dr. Gentry and the Board of Education to make sure that we all agree on a direction. Public education is clearly, uh, if you look at our budget, the most important thing we do. And uh, as we grow as a city, uh, we need to make sure that we're redoubling our efforts to improve the quality of public education in Nashville. And uh, I am committed as your mayor to working with the board and the director. And uh, I, I frankly hope that Dr. Battle is the director for a long time. Um, uh, I think she should be given the chance to do that. I think we should find a way to build support around her. And um, I think the city um, is ready um, to refocus on public education, to get past some of the uh, discord that we have had in the recent past, because um, it is my belief that regardless of where you may have been in the last few months uh, on this issue, that uh, folks in our town do want public education to succeed. We do want to see better student achievement we do want to see equity in our schools and that we do frankly have the resources um, to accomplish that and I'm committed to making sure we get there. Um, I do have a, a couple of questions um, that I, I will ask um, but um, we're not going to go into the weeds here for one reason because you Dr. Battle weren't the director when this budget was adopted by the board and I think it's I think it's um, I think it's fair for us to sort of let it percolate a little bit and for the staff to circle back with your staff in, in the coming weeks. Um, so I, I guess I have three or four basic questions. Total enrollment predicted for the 1920 school year, is it flat essentially? It's, it's essentially flat, uh, just under 86,000 <coughs> students, which would include pre-K students. Uh, but we're projecting overall flat. Uh, some areas continue to grow. Our south and southeast part of the county continues to grow. Uh, some areas we continue to see enrollment declines, but particularly in the northeast and northwest part of the county. So the increased, the $8.9 million in increase for charter schools essentially reflects a shift of around 700 students from the district to the charter system or charter schools. Is that right? That, that's correct. Okay. Um, in the budget that the the um, the board adopted, the I, I, so I was at Madison Middle last week, I think it was, and uh, they are currently receiving a grant, I think, of three hundred thousand dollars on an annual basis to focus on their priority status, which ends at the end of this school year, is the way I understood. Is there money in the in the budget proposed by the board to accommodate that loss of money for priority schools there's nothing in this in this proposal that that would take the place of that grant fund okay. of those grant funds All right. um, and then uh, the the last question I have is um, why 10% I mean, why 10% if you don't mind Mayor Briley, I Briley, think that's for you probably <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love to introduce you to my colleagues uh, sure. the Board of Education members uh, Mrs. Jill Spearing, Mrs. Franchata Bush, Mrs. Amy Frog, Mrs. Virginia Pupo Walker, and Mrs. Rachel Ann El Elrod. And um, our board chair, Dr. Sharon Gentry, is home away visiting her family because of, uh, of some health issues. And then our budget chair, Mrs. Anna Shepard, sends her, sends her best wishes because she's home um, with sickness. But the 10% is easy. That's what the employees asked for. We started with a 3% raise, pushed back, discussed 5, 6, mm -hmm. 10, even 15%. We were able to rally around the 10% because mm -hmm. uh, we know with the different morale issues that are, have been discussed in the community, we want, to, we want the, the teachers, the maintenance workers, the bus drivers, the pair pros to know that we are fighting for them and that we hear them. And that even if they aren't, they aren't able to get the full 10%, that we're able to get as much as possible. 
I guess I, guess I asked that because to me, um, as I focus on building community support for public education, I think we have to, I don't know that 10% is enough. I don't know if it's too much. And so I think from an objective, I mean, I mean, I mean I, so, I, I mean, I think we have to be, we have to be pretty, I'm going to be frank and say that um, I would commit over a longer term to more than 10%. But, and I think that is probably what we, the mayor and the Board of Education ought to conclude um, in the context of some sort of memorandum of understanding between myself and you. Um, and so I, but I think we have to talk about it in the context of pulling objective data and doing and looking concretely at exactly how we need to go about doing it. Because I will be frank with you again that um, I think we need to do something to give principals in high turnover schools some latitude to help keep their, their teachers in the schools. And so I think that that is that has got to be fundamentally something we do in the context of looking at compensation. Um, because if you lose 40% of your teachers every year, the school is not really going to find a way to increase student achievement. So um, I share the value that you expressed uh, with uh, that our teachers and our employees generally are underpaid. Um, I more than you probably know, share your frustration that we can't move faster. Um, but uh, I think we also share a commitment that um, we ha have um, an opportunity to do better and to see improvements across the board in MNVS. Um, and uh, I look forward to a new day, um, uh, Dr. Battle's day, and um, look forward to working with her and the Board of Education in the months and years to come. And I think that's all the questions we have today. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.